Hey there. Here we go. Hello, can you guys hear me? Shall we get rolling, Kathan, or do you want to wait for a few more? Let's get started, I think. That's fine. I think people will trickle in, and I, I know some of them are not able to join today, but. Okay. Um, Yi or Katrina, do you guys want to go first? Um, sure, Yi, you can go first, though. I feel like you have the bigger news to announce at the theater release. Uh, sure. I wait. I I thought you were announcing that, but oh, well, whatever. It's, it's okay. Let me go over the um. Okay. So after I think seven months of work, we finally merged the massive PR. Um, this screen is right. Yeah. Uh, the the PR for the native typing API version of FlightKit. Um, we made two, we found a mistake, of course, right afterwards. So there's actually two beta releases, but the the bulk of the notes, which um, is right here, is in the, the zero version. Um, we the, the main focus of the beta release was to try to get the API to a stable place where we to a place that we can commit to and commit to not changing. So the last piece of that was the plugin structure, which has been updated um, following a, a micro library type um, structure that is detailed in a blog post that we found, but basically takes advantage of the Python namespace packaging um, constructs. So you'll find all the new just a little bigger. Um, you, you can think of FlightKit plugins as basically a separate repo, and in the future, it may actually be a separate repo. Um, so every single plugin will basically mirror the structure that you want ultimately in the in the Py, in the PyPy package. So you pip install in this case FlightKit plugins. Uh, dash hive, and then um, the, the top level folder is empty. Uh, so GitHub just shows the bottom, the uh, actual plugin folder. So it's they all follow plugins, plugin name, FlightKit plugins, plugin name. So that is what enables the microlibrary uh, construct. Um, and yeah, I so going forward. Um, the, the square bracket uh, version of plugins will still install the old ones. So if you were doing, uh, I think, Spark 3 or the, the ones in the setup.py, uh, they will, they still, will, they won't fail, but they will not work and they will not install any of the new dependencies, uh, these, these things here. Um, yeah, check out the release notes and check out the blog post if you're interested. That's it. Yeah, I think uh, you, you may want to point to the new cookbook also. Um, I thought Katrina was doing that. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I guess I can do that. <laughs> yeah, you should. Um, cool. Okay. Well, with that wonderful transition, um, maybe we can start taking a look at the new cookbook then and just how easy it is to um, uh, iterate using the new flight kit. Um, let me share my screen. Oh, okay. Bummer. I guess I have to quit Zoom and rejoin because I've never shared my screen before. So see y'all in a sec. <laughs> Try no. According to Haytham, you don't actually have to do that. Okay. Hello again. Um, anyways, let me try to share my screen for real, real this time. Let's see if this works. Sweet. Um, awesome. So we've been hard at work on a um, a new uh, cookbook uh, with all sorts of examples for the updated plugin structure, as well as um, uh, all the kind of like getting started and kind of working your way up um, into more uh, concrete examples. Um, we have this huge PR open right now. I think we'll be merging this soon. Um, invite you to take a look at it. Um, <laughs> I guess the diff is probably not the most fun thing to look at. <laughs> um, Kate, then feel free to chime in with any examples. Um, we have a ton of new examples in here that are super interesting. Oh, sorry. Can you just show the rendered cookbook? Maybe that's better. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, did we push that to read the docs? No, no, we haven't, right? You'll have to show our local rendered. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Um, sweet. Give me uh, <laughs> one sec. Um, sorry, I guess there's a communication problem. Um, let me render that, unless somebody has it open on their machine already. Um, but yeah, the nice thing about this new cookbook is that uh, we have a bunch of interactive examples that you can run from the get-go. We're using the new kind of native uh, typing flight kit SDK. Um, so uh, it's really easy to kind of see how you can kind of begin iterating with your code and then slowly adapt it into a flight workflow. Um, and along with that, we have all sorts of plugins and examples. So um, kind of increasing complexity there as well too. Um, so let's take a look at new rendered cookbook. Let me share my screen one more time. Um, great, can you all see this? Awesome, thanks George. Um, so I think I may not be on the latest, latest case and apologies, um, but we have our examples here. Um, again, our basic examples, um, you can see we have this kind of sweet new gallery format where we can take a look at Oh, uh, here we have an example of a task, uh, call ads, you can download the code, run it as a Jupyter notebook. Um, we have more extensive examples here as well too with our plugins, um, Hive, SageMaker examples, uh, things you can kind of use to get hit, uh, hit the ground running, um, as well as kind of inline documentation as you can see here. Um, yeah, Keith and me, if you have anything to add. Uh, yeah, when, once we publish the docs, uh, we'll post that in the Flight Slack channel and we encourage you to take a look. Um, if you have any suggestions, questions, feedback, uh, always appreciated. Um, great. So uh, we can take a look at actually how to use, how easy it is to use a new flight kit to iterate now. Um, so let me show you kind of an example workflow I have and the steps we'll be taking to make changes to it. Um, so here I have a really simple kind of example workflow to celebrate our hey, new big Adrian, This is Santosh. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. I got it the first time. Uh, can we go to the cookbook a little bit? Oh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, one of the things, uh, you know, is this space is full of so many different uh, orchestration system from airflow to cadence to conductor to, you know, uh, whatnot. I was just wondering it, if it will make sense to maybe also add a section which talks about, okay, what's unique about flight or like why you should be using it. And also sometimes like which use cases you should not be using it for. Uh, so that section will probably be useful. I mean, just a thought. I mean, I see the example and I think, but high level framework when somebody's coming in to understand a uh, full lay of land, like what would be, what would be fitting use cases and what not be, 
that would be great. I really like the examples that you have put there, the real world examples. But um, I guess from that, somebody has to still decipher it. Like, okay, based on these examples, what it would be, a, what would be a good use case. So something like a two pager or something, two screens uh, that specifies that, that will be very, very useful. Santosh, mm -hmm. thank you for that comment. That's absolutely fair. Um, so this is the walkthrough uh, of using Flight. Mm -hmm. We have a entire documentation hub for Flight. Okay. Is so that it, no, arguably if that has to improve? And one of the biggest okay. things over there is um, addition of all the all the comparison. Mm. Comparison is a moving target. So yeah, so yeah. Comparison is a moving target. I, yeah. yeah as of at some point, and we would love uh, more community involvement in saying that, hey, this is wrong or this is correct. Uh, but yes, uh, look forward to it, hopefully. Um, okay, yeah, I can provide some inputs. Maybe we can have like a smaller conversation sometime, half an hour, 45 minutes to okay. maybe just, you know, based on my understanding of like what this ecosystem look, looks like, and then we can definitely build on top of that. That is amazing, that would be, and I will, uh, it's, it's, it's on my plate, and that's probably the next bit that I'm gonna uh, work on. Okay, great. Probably, awesome. uh, again, it's not going to be a one-man show. It's just too. Exactly. No, no, totally. I understand. Yeah. Thank you, but that completely taken and yeah. happy to be there, everyone. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Katrina. Please go ahead. Yeah. Just oh, yeah, to make yeah. That comment. Feedback. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of a common like piece of feedback with also <laughs> we definitely heard yeah. the address. Um, also, thank you, Yi, for uh, uh, sharing the latest link for the Polish stocks. Um, so you can take a look from your own machines if you're interested, and we'll be sharing this link, like I said, below. Um, but again, this is, yeah, mostly just the walkthrough docs as it stands. Um, is this not it? Okay, cool. No, oh, no. That, that's the default docs that's that Santosh is asking all about. The that's the face. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the existing docs. So this kind of has more of an introduction of like what is flight, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, thanks again, you. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, uh, any more feedback on docs or shall we take a look at interactive examples? Cool. Um, all right, so like I was saying before, we have this kind of very simple demo workflow I prepared for this as a demo. Um, celebrating new awesome like a beta release where you get to talk about how great it is. Um, so uh, to run this workflow, um, we'll have to build a Docker image, which I've already done previously. Um, and then we can use our fancy new um, out of container serialize. Um, so let me go back here. Um, so as part of this kind of interactive like docs revamp, um, we've added a few hidden rate file targets as, long, as well as uh, Docker files um, in order to easily uh, run and uh, build these examples on your own. Um, and part of these changes uh, to serialize here um, allow you to now run uh, pipeline serialize outside of uh, the container, which should hopefully be uh, improvement in your like kind of iterative workflow. Um, so you can take a look here, uh, simple one line command, we're gonna run that now. Um, let's run that. And um, I'm scoping our packages, so we're only serializing that demo workflow that I had. But as you can see, it's pretty fast, pretty straightforward. Um, and then after we serialize, uh, so this has converted all of our, our workflow task launch plan code to Cordova. Um, we'll need to register. And, and in order to register, um, we'll actually be modifying these protos just a little bit um, in order to uh, pass in the project, uh, in this case, flight tester and the domain and um, set a version, uh, which, uh, uh, is necessary now at the registration phase because these protos are actually completely portable. So let's say you've serialized them in one, you know, user's machine. You can share that and register that um, across any project or domain combo. Um, and those protos um, have kind of like no reference to that, those like registration type parameters. Um, cool. So we've gone ahead and registered our entities. Um, we can take a look if we want to. Um, sorry. This Zoom screen share. <laughs> oh my gosh, right in the way of my browser tabs. Okay. Um, so we can go and launch that new workflow uh, that we just registered and see our latest version, ABCDF. Um, the flight kit is awesome. So let's go ahead and launch that. 
Um, cool. While well, that's running, um, I'm running this locally, but um, we'll take a look at um, how to use this uh, deserialized register loop in order to pass register. Um, so traditionally, serialization requires you to rebuild the Docker image um, each time you make a code change. But if you're only making the code change, you don't need to update your Docker file dependencies. Uh, we can actually go ahead and just fast serialize. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to add, uh, I'm just going to make a code change here, add a lot of extra enthusiasm. Um, we're going to go back here, run the make fast serialize target. Um, again, this is documented in the latest code called changes. Um, go ahead and do this. Cool. So once again, pretty speedy to serialize. And then we'll go forward and, um, in this case, run the fast register files command. So we can go ahead and do that. And just like that, didn't need to rebuild the Docker image, nothing at all. Um, gone ahead and registered our workflow again uh, with updated code changes. So we can see here that our previous uh, workflow succeeded. Um, so let's go ahead and launch that fast register workflow. You can see that new version is here. Take that off and voila. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was a helpful kind of introduction to how to use new flight um, and how fast it can be uh, if you use fast registration um, to iterate through your code changes. Um, any questions? I probably will let me add a little bit of a comment or a plug for fast register because some people may not know uh, and some people are new. So just uh, the typical flow with flight before this point was you write code, you write a Docker file uh, and, and the Docker file is uh, simplified now, but like you have to write a Docker file and then you have to uh, so you have to build the Docker file and then you have to call PyFlight register inside the Docker file. What that would do is pick up all the code, figure out all the, you know, the, uh, serialize it into what flight understands and then push it to flight. And from that point on, it was like, you know, it's currently and in the future, it's remaining the same. We have changed this initial part. Like uh, what we realize is that you, you only build Docker files when you build dependencies in there. Let's say, for example, you want to add TensorFlow, you want to add PyTorch, or you want to add um, Spark, or you want to add uh, any other library. That needs, in Python specifically, that's very, very hard. You have to, um, to make it really portable. You, Docker is probably the best format uh, that we know. Uh, Pickle doesn't really work because Pickle only takes your code in the user space. Um, so uh, what we did is, uh, if you are now modifying any dependencies, it is still recommended to build a Docker file and uh, register that Docker version, right? The, the image version. But if you're not doing any modifications to the dependencies, which is the typical workflow for most users, right? They, they figure out the version of TensorFlow that they want to use or PyTorch. But going forward, they don't do that. So then they can jump onto using this thing called a fast register. What it does is skips the uh, image building phase and directly uh, uses the entire code base. Um, now, granted, you need one access from your user's machine. Instead of ECR, you need an access to something like S3 or instead of GCR, you need access to GCS. But as long as you can push to GCS to a specific directory that flight has access to, then uh, you can use fast register and that will take the entire code base and make it available to flight at runtime using your previously registered Docker images, right? So this, this way, if there are three users using the same workflow, but with different dependencies still can go independently because you can now use TensorFlow 1, TensorFlow 2 at the same time and PyTorch probably, right? Uh, weirdly within the same Docker images uh, and you can iterate on the same task and the same workflow and yet in your in your daily routine as you're working on it i trade on it really quickly because you don't have to re rebuild the images you just have to push your code which is only you know to your uh, specifications so that was the flow that we wanted to clean up uh, we did try pickle we did try a bunch of things and we saw a lot of errors in different cases and the the simplest uh, way we thought was to actually uh, sideload the code into the container and that's what we are doing 
Um, I, in Java, like in Java, uh, Gleb and Nelson have already implemented a way because Java is way more portable than uh, Spotify. So they, the default way in Flatkit Java is to actually um, move the code directly into the container, sideload the code. Uh, and so, and that works beautifully. So now both of them look the same. Almost. So hopefully that gives you a quick overview. And, uh, and the idea was to bring down the total iteration time from whatever, a minute sometimes to build a container and push it to less than five seconds. And, and it is, it's probably close to a second, but uh, we want to continue improving that time. Hey, Keithan. Uh, also, I think with once we have a <clears throat> a place to put all the the Docker images with every um, every flight kit release, we'll also release. We'll make a release on the GitHub page of Cookbook, and then we will uh, upload all the Docker images somewhere and serialize do the serialization step basically for everyone, so that you can just download a zip file of all the protobufs and register immediately. If that makes sense. Yep. And to that end, actually, Prefil here on the call is building a, a flight CTL register, which is a Go binary that anybody can install on any machine to uh, easily, it's a standalone binary to do registrations and so on. So this, the entire process to just simplify this entire flow uh, also, the dependency on S3 and GCS, we are thinking if we should just add a new endpoint on flight admin, that will proxy uh, GCS or S3 to upload your, uh, your side-loaded code. That way, the users don't need any more permissions besides having access to admin. And so we would love to uh, hear feedback about that and see if we want to do that. Hey, Kevin, I had a quick question. Um, <clears throat> or I don't know if it's quick, but... Um, What's the thinking around like traceability as far as like what version of my code is actually running in the cloud? Um, I know we historically have used like the Git SHA and forced users to use commits, um, but with this whole new process kind of lose that. Yeah, we don't lose it. So it's, it's <clears throat> opt in, and I would still recommend to use if you have the right CI CD system set up for pushing images that is still probably the best way because it's guaranteed, right? Like it will run. Yeah. Side loading still has potential failures that can happen at runtime. Uh, so uh, it, it's not foolproof, but uh, very good question. So the way we are tracing is every time, uh, and Katrina can please uh, put in if I'm wrong, but um, every time we build the, SHA, uh, the, the, the artifact, which is the serialized and compressed version of your code, it is um, hashed using a hashing algorithm uh, and assuming there are some changes and the hashing, there are not collisions happening within the same stream of changes, uh, you will get unique identifiers. Now the good, now the important question here is how do I trace back? Mm -hmm. Because the code is stored in S3, we have a unique link always to all the older versions. And that's why we think that proxying it to flight admin might actually make it fully traceable because we might be able to build a nicer reference to like, hey, this is the code that ran and this was the you know version. And, uh, but replayability, as long as you don't go and delete the code from S3, the replayability is guaranteed. Um, the other bit over here, which I think which you've hit on um, is, uh, is like total, like we know we have reproducibility and so on, but there's no easy way of visualizing all of this. And there's a story that Katrina is kind of trying to uh, uh, flesh out and that is documentation. Uh, we, we basically for every single workflow task and version, we want to have an associated documentation and automatically associated to the GitHub SHA if you're using GitHub or Git SHA in mm -hmm. any other place. Um, and the fast registered, uh, archive uh, automatically. So then from your execution, you will be able to go to the actual uh, reference entity. From there, you can go to the referenced code. That that would be the flow. Hopefully that answers your question. A little long-winded. But... Yeah, no, that, <clears throat> that helps. Um, just trying to think through kind of how to like give the developer experience, but also um, traceability. Because one thing we've had complaints, we force everybody to make a commit and sometimes they basically had complaints 
yeah yeah and and doing this like you know uh, again probably we are not even thinking hard enough for this problem the, the doing this pervasively throughout the entire ecosystem of flight is hard like this means if you fast register your code is now available on let's say if you are using sagemaker on mm -hmm. sagemaker without building a docker container which they don't have a you know uh, capability of on spark without building a docker container natively on um, uh, if we tomorrow add google cloud platform uh, services then on google cloud platform and so on so so that's uh, doing that pervasively is the hard one and i still call this an experimental feature i'm sure we will find some bugs uh, so please be uh, uh, vocal about it bring it up we'd love to fix them uh, in our testing we've seen that it works in most cases um, but yeah, we would love to know if you find it. Yeah. I wanted to add one thing too, to like your concern, Miguel, is like one of the things that we're envisioning is that you can kind of use fast register as part of like your development iteration process. But once you're kind of like pushing code all the way through to production, maybe that's the case where you end up using the kind of traditional like register commit uh, method. So then you get all the benefits of like peer review, et cetera, if you are using that for your code <clears> review. <throat> Um, and you're not pushing just like code willy nilly to production, but fast register is kind of like a tool to just improve like the development iteration cycle. Um, but like Ethan mentioned, hopefully with like the inline kind of code documentation hub, we'll have kind of you know the ability to understand what's going on regardless of your registration method. So yeah, no, that makes total sense. Um, that's one thing at least. Like here, we don't really use separate dev and production for the most mm -hmm. part. So kind of this will be our forcing function for users to <laughs> <laughs> to use that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. We still want to make sure that flight, the the end goal for flight is to make you know your production workflows really, really work. Right? We want to guarantee that things that happen in production really works well. But we realize that iteration is a key user story in this scenario. So we want to now probably say that we want to accelerate from local to uh, production. Fair point. Yeah. Cool. Uh, hey, one question here. Uh, so that boundary when you have to build the gate image and when you don't, uh, is that very clear in the programmers that I don't program so much, so I would not. Uh, but the idea is that if I'm doing this iteration, at some point of time, I make a change. Is it very evident to me that, uh, I mean, uh, at the coding level, when I compile or when I deploy or something like that, which will tell me that, hey, you have to deploy the KA because you've changed certain dependencies if I'm making a mistake. Is that, does that happen or is it too hard to implement? So this is a very good question, Santosh. So uh, two things. Uh -huh. It's very hard to, for flight to know that you should be building an image at this point. What will happen in the case you do the wrong thing is at mm -hmm. runtime, you will get a failure saying that, oh, you asked for TensorFlow, but your image doesn't have TensorFlow. Right? Got it. Okay. But that's it's okay i think okay it's, it's okay fast, yeah. moving fast right yeah. but on the other side for a developer i think once you get used to it that that like let, let's say if you are working on a typical ec2 machine or something the way you would go it is go and do pip install right first and and what we need to say is that when you're doing the pip install is when you build the image other mm -hmm. and, and to an astute, right? The, like to a like, person who is now understanding what we can do with this, is that there can be a gallery of images that are pre-built with a set of um, dependencies already pre-installed. So for the extremely, uh, I don't want to call it naive because that's not the wrong, but a, a yeah. user who doesn't really care about the dependencies, they are like, hey, I'm building a TensorFlow algorithm. I'm just building a Spark job. I don't care about what it is. Then they can just choose the gallery image. And now building the gallery image is dependent, let's say, on the platform uh, developers or so on. And that's that's the direction that we are going in. So uh, okay. awesome, uh, got it, got it. Uh, another idea I was just thinking about is that will there be like a template, or you know, there are some structures like you have to basically dot, you know, compile file used to be there where you in C or something where you specify all the libraries or dot h files. Uh, if that kind of template can help here, I mean, that's just an idea, but yeah. No, that's excellent. Like we, we do have in Python, there is requirements. Okay. Uh, so we are actually, the thing is not every developer uses it, right? So okay. like Python has this huge range of developers, which yeah. Yeah. extremely like deploying production services to 
Mm. People are just trying out things, right? Yeah. So uh, what we want to do as a going, as in one of the future steps is, and we would love contributions on this, is write a cookie cutter project template uh, or something, a project template that you just say, hey, install this template or init this template, and it will build the yeah. right for you to write flight uh, things. And then within that environment, it's more controlled. Yeah. So yeah. we can probably, you know, exactly kind of, you know, predict when the user has modified the requirements that in, but not rebuild the image, but exactly. uh, still hard. Yeah. I mean, I would say that, yeah, this is great progress. And once we get the feedback and if you see that that's actually a pain point, then we have some solutions regarding that. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there will be people who will be a little confused. And I know mm -hmm. he and uh, hate them and Katrina, uh, Katrina, all of them have voiced concerns saying that I know this makes it fast, but we are going to have weird yeah. issues where people will not have built and they'll have runtime yeah. and they'll ask like, yeah. hey, but I think it's the, yeah. I, I'm more concerned the, about, yeah. <laughs> I'm not concerned about that libraries are missing. I'm more concerned about, you know, you have to increase the version of your library or something mistaken and then four, six, eight hours later, you're figuring out that, oh shit, I did not make this change your library version or some small thing. So yeah. the problem is not that if the compile time failures get caught. It's right. like something is missing and the compile time is failure. Awesome. That's like, you know, good situation to be in. I'm thinking more about the bad situation. They're like, okay, one library version, I did not change. Everything ran, but ran wrongly. And maybe I got to know only after I checked the data a few days later. So that, that kind of cases become like really problem. Yeah, hopefully you use memoization and uh, the oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <10 seconds>, so, <laughs> so we're trying to cover all bases. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, I mean, and it's, the idea is not to kind of fully fledge out all the possible possibilities in which things will fail. I think we should just basically test and you know then figure out which are the areas where we need to improve. So that's fine. I mean, I just wanted to bring this up to your. Yeah. No, this is great. Like I think hopefully we are taking down the notes and we'll keep them. Uh, the way I envision is that uh, any project will have uh, their CI CD pipeline already configured. Mm -hmm. So you will use like a fast iteration for local testing. And uh, yeah, this is working. But at the end, I will expect that uh, developers will go to the JIC uh, repo and, and make a commit and then will trigger a CIDC that maybe will do the the building match and, and then uh, hopefully these kind of things will be reduced uh, because of that. Awesome. You can also think of it as we are almost requiring a commit for every code change. And with this, when you're just doing fast iteration, you, you don't necessarily have to commit, but when you're ready for production, we still expect the full normal commit build cycle with audibility and everything else. This is just speeding up iterative mm. development. Yeah, one of the things though we might want to do probably at some point is see if it is feasible to make sure that you can do local commits, right? Local git commits might be forced and that way uh, we might even get a better trackability. Again, it's not great because if you don't push it, <laughs> the history is lost, but yeah, it's yeah. something better, yeah. Maybe. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. Great. Uh, Nelson, would you like to go next? I think you're going to. Yeah, I can, can go next. Awesome. Uh, share my screen. Yes. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Nelson from Spotify. Uh, I'm being uh, in the company for over six years and in the data infrastructure department. We have like a fancy words for uh, regular things. So we call it tries, but it's a department. And I've been in part of the team that we have been uh, doing flight inside of the company. Uh, we started talking maybe like a year ago by now, I don't know, more or less. And so I will explain what, uh, what we've been doing. Uh, this is the agenda. Uh, I want to have like a description of how we do a uh, very high overview of how we do data Spotify. Uh, yeah, one of the main contributions to Flight is Flight in Java. So I have like a small slide about that. But uh, yeah, uh, we did a presentation, a full presentation about Flight in Java earlier. So 
it will be better for you to take a look at that instead of this slide. Um, then, okay, how we have our setup, what we are doing right now, and things uh, we, we are going to do later in the future. So, okay, um, I assume that you are familiar with Spotify. We are a streaming music company with uh, hundreds of millions of users uh, worldwide. Uh, but here we are, talk, we are. I'm going to talk about data. So um, we don't. We are a big company, so we don't have one data team. Uh, I guess uh, most of big companies work this way. We have platform teams that give support to many feature teams. So uh, my team is regarding uh, scheduling orchestration batch. Uh, data pipelines, and then we provide tooling and services to, let's say, the search team that uh, does the uh, is in charge of when you search for uh, something in the app, it gave you a, it will produce some uh, artists uh, tracks or whatever or playlists. So we are the way we have data engineers in all these feature teams and. We, as a platform, we made their life easier. Uh, we have more than 10,000 distinct batch jobs. And these, uh, we have, we are much more uh, batch heavy than stream heavy. And uh, we have this, uh, uh, is a wide range of, of workflows. Uh, most of the workflows, uh, are using a uh, Luigi, a uh, Python library the uh, Spotify built years ago. And uh, this, def you define a workflow, uh, the DAC using um, task and Python, and everything running as a library. So it's a, I would say it's a part of the library instead of flight that is a, yeah, you compile it in a protobuf and then send it to the service. Here is running inside the machine. Um so uh, yeah, it's not as convenient. That's the one of the reason why we want to uh, migrate to flight. Um, we have our own GK cluster to run these uh, Luigi workflows, but most of workflows, what they do is they spawn uh, heavy jobs in GCP. Uh, we are using Google Cloud uh, products, so uh, we use uh, data flow uh, for pipelines. Uh, we have some uh, legacy pipelines running in the data pro. Data pro is like a managed Hadoop cluster. We use heavy BigQuery. Uh, so, um, but all of these uh, tools where they have like, as a key is that they run outside of the GKE cluster that we manage. So we have like a uh, in our uh, all stack, we have like a 120 nodes uh, uh, for running all these uh, batch uh, jobs. Um, so uh, we are uh, have a mix of uh, workflows written in Python, but uh, we have also a big uh, chunk of that written in Java. So. Um, those that are written in Java uh, have like the the pain that the orchestration, the workflow definition is written in Python, but their number crushing side is written in Java. So uh, that's a great pain for them. Uh, and we we also built an open source uh, a scheduling system that's called, we call it the Sticks. It's also open source. And Sticks includes the scheduling is very, very good to say, okay, this is our workflow partitioning by time. And so we have like a retries, backfills, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and in, uh, included like the execution, the handling of the GK cluster to run the, the these Luigi workflows in their own GK cluster. Uh, what I have been doing is extending these sticks to be able to trigger uh, flight uh, launch plans, and now we can do that. So we have this mix environment. 
Okay, uh, very briefly, uh, Flaky Java, uh, yeah, uh, with uh, SDK to define tasks and workflows uh, for flight. Um, is uh, we have minimum level product features uh, we are using the in Teams. Uh, so what I want to say is that it still haven't achieved feature parity with the uh, Flaky Python, uh, the regular Flaky. Uh, but we are working on that. Uh, yes, uh, there is a, a link to the GitHub, it's open source, and we also want the, um, we uh, we will donate this to Flight, so once uh, Flight have their new home, uh, Flight in Java will be included. Okay, um, yeah, I won't talk about this anymore because Gleb did the presentations a few weeks ago, so you would rather want to see that presentation. Nelson, can I interrupt you and ask a real quick question? Is um, yeah. sticks is sticks is your stick scheduler pretty tightly welded to GCP, or would that run on AWS or Microsoft as well? Yeah, it's um, yeah very tied up to GCP. Okay, that's uh, what I would say. Yeah, yeah we are. Uh, that's what uh, I would expect. We, I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah, we never thought uh, we we open source it as a side product, right? We first build it to want to solve our problem. And just say, hey, let's make it open source. Um, but it's uh, very tied to. That's what I would expect. I didn't mean to do really. I was just curious. But go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now let's talk about flight. Uh, we uh, do things on GCP. So we use uh, a managed Kubernetes cluster uh, with Google Kubernetes engine. Uh, PostgreSDB is using Cloud SQL. Uh, we use PubSub and uh, GCS, uh, Google Cloud Storage for artifacts. So we don't use S3, but GCS. Uh, we have our cluster managed by Terraform. So uh, that way we configure our cluster, uh, how big it is, features it needs. Uh, um, uh, but uh, we have, uh, Spotify also have like a backend side of infrastructure that we are taking advantage to deploy Friday mean and data catalogs to the managed Kubernetes cluster of so Spotify wide. So it's not, we have the, our, Cluster for flight is only only have propeller inside. Everything else is in the this uh, uh, system wide managed coordinated cluster. Um, at the moment, we are using uh, vanilla components. What it means is that uh, we are taking the propeller uh, being as it is, just tweaking the configuration to use the GCP. Um, components inside the uh, fried bean and propeller. Uh, uh, we contribute uh, part of this uh, code uh, uh, months ago. So it's uh, our contribution are in the fly open source. Um, but we would plan to write a Spotify specific plugins. Uh, some of them could be uh, uh, use uh, uh, some of them could be open source because uh, like triggering data flows, uh, a data flow plugin or BigQuery plugin, something that will be wide uh, um, interest. Uh, but uh, we have like internal systems like, uh, uh, I will talk about one of those uh, later, it's uh, our lineage service. Uh, this is a, a internal uh, Spotify product. Uh, and so eventually we will write uh, plugins for those systems, but we are not there yet. Uh, we have uh, a common task repository. This is, uh, we have a, a project uh, where we are uh, building a common tasks to be meant, uh, to be used for several teams at Spotify. Uh, these, uh, for example, how to launch a data flow jobs is in this repo. Uh, that task is not a plugin yet, it's a, 
container-based tasks at the moment, but we plan to rewrite it to be a, a plugin base in the future. And we have, uh, we use internally something called like, uh, you can imagine like a DNS for data. We, uh, when, uh, where I can get this data. So we give it, give it a name and give it a, a partition, like a time. I will say, okay, that data is, is in this URI. So that can interaction with that system is also a task that we have in this central repo. Um, those tasks are mostly written in Flaky Java. And we also build like a lightweight libraries to, to get reference to this task in the decentralized repo. So um, instead of using, uh, it, it will be just a, as a library, uh, you include like a, in your uh, workflow, like a very, it is it, a very short, very few lines of code to, to make reference to this task. So this is like, a, okay, get this task, get, we take a, we do a call to get the latest version of private mean for this task, and that's the one we use uh, the repository at uh, the workflow. And we have these uh, uh, lightweight libraries in Java and Python. So we have uh, uh, teams uh, testing uh, flight, and we have on, on both uh, SDKs. Uh, what we're doing right now, uh, we just at the end of last year, uh, we released our setup as a alpha, how we call it internally. That means that it's uh, ready for other teams, so feature teams to start experimenting. Uh, we are not full produ production yet for some components that I will uh, talk about. Uh, we basically we need better integration with the uh, uh, Spotify infrastructure, and th that's what we are building. So um, the one we are doing at the moment is our linear service, and so what we want is that every time we execute our flight workflow, we are able to communicate communicate with this system. And for doing that, uh, we are looking uh, flight admin uh, as the property to send events, but the event uh, flight of meet sense is more mostly like a, a email style notification events. We want to do, uh, take a look of that and, and make it like a, a, still keep the functionality to send emails, but be able to be, uh, to send uh, data, basically protocol messages that um, uh, then we can consume those events and talk to our, our linear service. So this is what we are doing at the moment. Uh, that is on the what to do with flight. Uh, internally also, we are like a, a, a improving onboarding for these feature teams. Uh, for example, you talk about cookie cutter. We build a cookie cutter internally. We have like a, um, a in, in internal, in the internet, we have like a create a flight project and uh, people press a button and we create a, a, a project with cookie cutter already with a bunch of stuff in place. Uh, they still need to do some manual. Uh, they have to ping us, for example, to create the projecting flight. So there are some integrations still missing and documentation also is still missing for that. So, uh, oh, uh, this, uh, I forgot to replace this. This is like our internal builds CI CD system. So uh, uh, we have a way right now, the cookie cutter project that we produce have like a very noisy for the, any, the build steps. We will improve that by calling, creating something called templates to make uh, CI CD easier. And also a little bit further in time, uh, we will uh, scale our cluster and harden our setup. That means that uh, one of the first things that people ask us is, says, okay, are you on call for this? 
And we say, not yet, uh, we are still busy in doing this integration stuff. Uh, but once these roadblocks are, are solved, then okay, we will pay attention. Uh, um, uh, this is something that Leaf has done before, but we, we haven't done yet. So we need to learn, okay, how we manage flight at scale when we throw a lot of load, how, how it behaves, is our monitoring in place, alerting, what we need to be alert for. Uh, so this is something that we are, we are not doing right now, but we are doing very shortly. And last, uh, what we are interested in going forward is that um, we want to expand the flight security features and something that uh, we implement in Spotify is that uh, we use uh, service accounts to uh, have access to data and everything have their own service account and got like a strict policies the not allowing people there. Basically what we want is that if we have a workflow, we don't want uh, developers from other team be able to trigger workflows, uh, my workflows. We want to have some authorization in place. And for that, we will work with, uh, with you. Uh, we're not there yet. Um, maybe we will do this uh, at the middle of the, the year. Uh, and then we will do backend plugins for uh, data flow and BigQuery. That is, we spread this to donate to to the community, but also for this internal task for our system that we have as a container-based task. We also plan to move it as a, a backend plugins. And last, uh, we have four thousand Luigi workflows and. We cannot expect uh, people to migrate uh, to spend that time. Uh, so we are thinking like a, some kind of Luigi emulator for fly workflows. Uh, we have we did some proof of concept uh, last year, uh, but we are not focusing on that yet. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, do you have uh, questions? Awesome, Nelson. I had a question. If you go back to slide number six, maybe. Uh -huh. So I guess just for everybody's understanding, the common task in central, you know, the common task project is essentially yeah. a flight project in which you have tasks registered by the platform team. Is that right? Yes, and then, yes. And, and yeah, then, we, we, we as platform team, uh, we, we know that People will interact with these uh, Spotify services like this, like a, as I mentioned, DNS for data, or um, uh, people will respond a, a, a task for uh, will spawn uh, uh, data flow jobs, or will do like a BigQuery loads, meaning that I have some data in GCS, I want to upload it to BigQuery. So these are common tasks in the in Spotify, and we have that common task as a Luigi task in our internal repository. So basically, we are taking that internal Luigi task and rewrite it as a flight task to be used because they are commonly used uh, across uh, data engineers at Spotify. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anybody has any other questions? I had one more question. So I think there are two other teams, right? That I, I don't know how the relationship is uh, or how like, are you guys the platform team for them, but there's the financial engineering team and then there is the flat map team, right? Which- Yes, flat, flat map team is also, uh, is another platform team. Uh, at least they are the maintainers of, uh, we don't write a, a work, uh, data pipelines in data flow directly. Uh, the, this team build a Scala, uh, DC, DSL on top of Java data flow. So people can write their pipelines in Scala. Uh, using some, uh, an API similar to Spark, Scalding, so they can hybrid there. And uh, they, uh, they want now to see, to explore like, okay, 
uh, can we uh, do instead of that we are very data flow heavy but we are writing in um uh, the data flow i don't know how much you know uh, there is a apache project called apache bean and this was like a, a execution model that google donated to apache so uh, but that apache bean have several implementations the the gcp implementation is called data flow so you are able to write your apache bean jobs and running in data flow but they have other runners and they have this flink runner and we are exploring doing that so uh, this uh, team is a platform team and they are exploring uh, have a flink uh, a plugin for flight so we can uh, see uh, see how feasible to run this uh, with flink so uh, they uh, they are prototyping that um, and uh, probably say uh, they will uh, donate that Flink operator or Flink plugin to, to the community. And the financial engineering, those are a feature team as we call it. And they, they like a lot uh, be able to use notebooks and they do forecasting. Uh, so uh, they want to use, uh, they love Python and it has a, a flight is uh, perfect for them. So uh, we have, they are running on our cluster. They don't have their own flight setup. Uh, we provide for them their setup and we're interacting with them. Thank you for that clarification. That was awesome. Hey, Nelson, what's the state of the BigQuery plugin? You mentioned it on the last page. Um, yeah, yeah. The state is the uh, is is in to do. It's, this is like a, what we are going to interest going forward. Right? Okay, so it hasn't no, it hasn't been started yet, right? No, um, we uh, we have uh, another platform team is uh, the the one Glebs is uh, belongs. Uh, and they are uh, taking over the ownership of BigQuery. So uh, they will be working on that uh, soon. Like, uh, I think uh, in the co coming months, we will have uh, these uh, backend plugins for BigQuery. Awesome. Uh, but today, if you want to run BigQuery, do you use a Java common task, or, like the common task thing, or do you not run BigQuery? Yeah, we are not running BigQuery yet. We have the container-based task for uh, um, deploying a data flow job. And the BigQuery is still running with Luigi. We haven't built, we haven't built this uh, task yet. But uh, uh, that will change soon because uh, Glebsyn is actually taking that. Awesome. Yeah, at, at Lyft also, there is a team that has some big query queries and the way they have done today that they wrote, they wrote a Python, uh, basically a Python task, right? Which is a plugin, uh, which has the query and everything in there. And so- Yeah, yeah. The, the way we think to do it is to use the, uh, Google have uh, uh, these uh, Kubernetes operator for data flow and big query. Uh, so uh, basically, we we are going to piggyback on that and create a, um, a our plugin uh, to generate those uh, CR, CRD resources. So let uh, Google operator do the work. So it shouldn't be that problematic. Uh, we are going to have the BigQuery one ready before Dataflow because. Uh, uh, we are the ones who care about data flow, but we're still busy doing this uh, lineage integration and then with authorization. Because for us right now, the container-based task is working. So, okay, that's working, let's focus on things that are missing. Uh, but the Glebs team uh, uh, will we, we proceed with the, this BigQuery backend plugin. 
we're coming up on an hour and I kind of want to be respectful of people's time. Um, um, so let, unless there are any more questions, I think we probably ought to brought to a close pretty soon. Kathy, are, you, are you planning now or do we need to postpone that for next? We'll postpone that. I just have a quick plug though. Uh, I will again post the link to the sheet here. What I've done is there are two sheets now. Um, one of them has themes. Uh, please add any more themes. And then the first sheet is, I don't think, we're just crowdsourcing ideas what people would like uh, to have. And please add them. I'll put the link here. And it's just for everybody. Um, and so just go through the themes. And these are some of the themes that we will be working on in this year um, and some of the ideas in there. Uh, some of them actually we already like. I got individual messages from people. So I tried to pull them together into there. Uh, but yeah, don't be shy to add your thing to the sheet. Um, uh, well, like for example, like Google uh, GCP AI platform integration is interested, uh, Freedom is interested in that and so on. Um, so please, please add things. And if I missed out, definitely add more. That's it. And then we'll probably go over it in the coming one or the one after that if more time is needed. But we want to do like a clear layout for uh, new people to come in. So like, hey, these are the things that are getting built. These are the things we cannot, we don't have people. <laughs> so if there are anybody who can contribute, it would be awesome. Thanks, Nelson, especially. Yes, uh, thank mm -hmm. you. That was amazing. Thank you for all your hard work to get that thing merged. And Katrina. Yeah, congratulations. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. I'll uh, you, Zoom processes the video for a while, then we upload it to YouTube, and then YouTube processes it for a while. So it usually doesn't get all finished until this afternoon, but we'll post notes in the video um, sometime later today for anybody that had to drop off. If you want to spend a while. Thanks, everybody. I think we're going to get a preview of Lyft's um, deployment, which looks quite different, which is interesting. Um, next meeting from on mall. Um, he couldn't do it today. We wouldn't have had time anyway. But uh, so. If you're interested in that, make sure to show up in a couple of weeks. And uh, and we are always open for demos of projects in in, uh, in flight, so to speak. Even yeah, even like other things that are not related to flight. Like I think the sticks and everything. I would be really interested in seeing more details about that uh, and see how we can even know if there's a collaboration over there. Would love to. Yeah, we've certainly felt the need for a reliable, scale cloud-based scheduler. Um, okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you in a couple weeks.